Que pasa, mis ojos? What is up, my peeps? You're tuned in to the Outbreak Series podcast, number 18. 18. It's the podcast where I've been tracking the coronavirus pandemic all around the world, in the U.S. of A, and into my home state of West Virginia. It's been nearly two weeks since my last podcast. I apologize for that. I know you missed me. And in those two weeks, shit has been incredibly crazy, to say the least. But before I get into it, please hit that subscribe button down there somewhere. Uh, and feel free to comment down below if you have anything you need to get off your chest. All right, then. Let's get to the numbers. Okay, my friends, let's get to those numbers. In the United States of America, we have 2,045,000 plus positive cases of the coronavirus with over 114,000 people lost. New York and New Jersey, I've put them together. That was the hot spot for the longest time. Positive cases totaling 567,000 with 42,000 lost in those two states in my hometown of D.C. 9,474 positive cases with 495 lost. D.C. seems to be holding up pretty well. And then finally, West Virginia also holding up well. 2,179 confirmed cases, 84 people lost. All right, well, it's June 10th today. You know, one of my first podcasts back on March 19th, there were about 9,000 confirmed cases in the United States with 150 deaths. So that means in less than three months, over 114,000 Americans have died from COVID-19. 114,000 people. And that's just here in the U.S. So that means that roughly 5% of those infected with the coronavirus here in the United States have been lost or or died. And that's nothing to sneeze at. So for those of you not taking this thing seriously, you might want to rethink that, okay? All right, let's get to Brazil. I've been following Brazil and my brothers and sisters in the favelas and my indigenous people there and everyone in the cities all around Brazil. So, uh, the numbers in Brazil have escalated very quickly. Right now, 742,000 confirmed cases with 38,000 lost. So, you know, prayers going out to all my brothers and sisters here in the U.S., in Brazil, in those favelas, and everybody around the world. We're all brothers and sisters, okay? I don't care what color you are. I don't care where you're from. We're all pretty much the same. So, just think about that. All right, so next, I want to get to some news. There's plenty of it, okay? Stay tuned. Be right back. All right, let me clarify something real fast. Now, when I spoke of the 5% that have lost their lives from coronavirus, now, that 5% is out of the 2,045,000 positive cases on record in the United States. Okay, that's not counting uh, the people that have had the coronavirus before, um, the people that haven't been tested Whatnot, yada, yada, yada. You got it right. Okay. All right, guys, this is a tough one. Uh, now for some news. I really don't know where to start. So I'm sure all of you know by now um, what happened to George Floyd in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Um, it was recorded. Um... And it was just an awful thing to, to witness. He was accused of, I guess, 
trying to pass a counterfeit $20 bill. And it turned into four officers um, having Mr. Floyd on the ground with with Derek Chauvin, whatever the fuck his name is, kneeling on George Floyd's neck for almost nine minutes while he was handcuffed, lying face down on the street. Um, the other three officers, some helped restrain him and one watched without doing anything. Anyway, it was recorded with, with camera phones from a few different angles and um, the video became public and people hit their breaking point. Um, and before you know it, you know, we have, uh, mass protests. So May 29th, four days after the incident, the officer that was on Floyd's neck was arrested, charged with third degree murder and manslaughter or something like that. Um, all the while, protesting was happening all over the United States. People wanted the other three officers to be arrested. And those protests became very nasty. You know, there was rioting, there was looting, a lot of violence. You know, the protests included people of all colors, backgrounds, um, and it was just, just unbelievable to witness. Um, never seen anything like it in my lifetime. So anyway, after those three officers were arrested and charged, we began to, to witness a more peaceful protesting. Um, it actually turned into a movement, um, it was, it was just amazing. It's still going on right now, today, um, over two weeks later. So you guys know all about it, so there's no need for me to get into it. Comment down below if you have anything. There's been a lot of different points of view on, on the rioting, the, the protesting, and, you know, how... The president has handled all of this and uh, everything else, you know. So since we're on the topic of the president, this is not a Trump bashing podcast, but I do want to state some facts here. Uh, yeah, the president pretty much failed to show any, any empathy um, towards the protesters, George Floyd's family, whatnot. He was all about, um, you know, containing the situation, I guess. And he even called in federal forces to Washington, D.C., my hometown. And he was actually able to, to do that because the District of Columbia is not a state, so... We had some National Guards. We had federal forces that he had called in from all around the country into D.C. And that just actually agitated the protesters even more. They weren't backing down. And, you know, one of the worst moments was, in my mind, it's my opinion here, uh, when... Donald Trump and his people forcefully removed the peaceful protesters from Lafayette Square with pepper spray, whatever, rubber bullets, whatever you want to call it, knocking them down, knocking the people down. It's, it's all on video. Check it out if you haven't. Just so Trump could do a photo shoot, a photo op, at St. John's Church that's that's very close to the White House an Episcopal Church uh, 
you know, we're hearing that White House officials are saying that uh, it was his daughter Ivanka's idea. Um, it was ridiculous. He he went over there and after forcefully removing peaceful protesters, and it was ugly. He went over to the church and held up a Bible and held it upside down at first. Didn't quote anything from the Bible. Um, I mean, many church leaders spoke out against this. Um, and that was actually the breaking point where you saw and you heard people like four-star General James Mattis speak out against Trump. Others included General John Kelly, General John Allen, Navy Admiral Mike Mullen, Air Force General Richard Myers, and four-star general, former National Security Advisor, former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and Republican Secretary of State under Bush, Colin Powell. It was like dominoes. I mean, once James Mattis spoke out, everybody else spoke out. And there are many, many more that have done that. And basically they were speaking out, um, the main thing uh, they were speaking out against is when Trump threatened to use active military to quell the protests in D.C. and throughout the country, which he's really not able to to do that but that was the breaking point um and also speaking out against his record of divisiveness and, and lies and and everything else and then one other thing here uh trump did announce that his administration will designate antifa as a terrorist organization which is unconstitutional. You cannot do that. And, you know, he likes to, to threaten people, put out those tweets and threats. I have one question for Donald Trump. If you are, if you want to designate Antifa as a terrorist organization, why haven't you spoke out against the KKK as a domestic terrorist organization? So, I'm done with this. Comment down below if you have anything. It's a touchy subject. But I love you guys. Alright, I love all of you. Alright, on to the next piece of news. And then, there's this. To add more fuel to the fire of divisiveness. You know, I, I want him to always know just how welcome he is in West Virginia. And any president, you know, we should absolutely welcome all, but, as, you know, maybe not Barack Obama, <laughs> but nevertheless, we'll welcome any president, you know. Thank you so much. You know, I, I want you to always know just how welcome he is. All right, for those of you that don't know, that was the governor of West Virginia. Not a proud moment for my home state. No more words for this. All right, guys, so this podcast is coming to an end, thank God. Um, just remember, there's still a pandemic out there. In fact, today, Dr. Fauci spoke out and called the coronavirus pandemic a nightmare and stated that it's very far from over. So don't get too complacent. Stay on point. Do all those things the CDC recommends. Stick with it. I mean, I'm still wearing my mask. I don't know about you. Um, so, you know, there's there's so many unknowns with this with this virus, especially related to the transmission of COVID-19. Uh, we just really don't know exactly how it's transmitted, how easy it is. Um, so just just be careful, okay? Um, and we'll get through this shit one way or another. I'm going to end with a couple quotes, okay? So 
to protect the sheep, you gotta catch the wolf. And it takes a wolf to catch a wolf. So get up, stand up, stand up for your right. Get up, stand up, and never give up that fight. Speak up. Now is your time, okay? Love you guys. Peace, love, and happiness. Until the next time.